coveting. I just want to give you more in terms of illustrations on what coveting is. What I know is that covetousness is the mother. <laughs> it bathes many other sins. It bathes many other sins. Looking at Achan alone. Why do you think he's tall? He stole. I told you the rule was do not take. He took, he hid. He stole. Why? He started with coveting. Coveting will bear theft. It will bear lies. You will tell lies because you want the thing. Coveting bears dishonesty. You become dishonest. I remember, let me share this story. It's an old story, so it doesn't really matter much. When we were still uh, fellowshipping in, in uh, that other place, Aya, there was this woman who came to church. She was part of the church for some days, and then soon after we get to know that she had some problems. So she tells us her story, you know, I come from Tanzania. You know, my husband, he beats me. You know, I am wounded. I need to go to hospital. And then would give, him, would give her money to go to hospital. You know, we did that, I think, on two occasions. At some point, we even went to her home and visited her. Some ramshackled place. Looking back, I don't think it was her home. It must have been an abandoned makeshift structure. You'll get to understand later. At some point now, she comes back and says, you know what? I have to go back to Tanzania. It has become too much. This man is beating me up. He's going to kill me. So my husband asks her, how much? The journey to Tanzania? I don't remember very well. Probably it was 300 or 400,000 shillings. Something in that region. Ladies and gentlemen, this is like 10 years ago. Yeah. To, yeah. So we, we fork out this money. We give it to her. Please go. Go to Tanzania for your safety. Let this man not kill you on this foreign soil. Sister, please go. I want to tell you, a few days later, we saw that woman walking on the village. <laughs> she was walking. She was a trickster. She was a fraudster. She was coveting money. She could see that this man here, he has some money. I'm going to trick him. And I can see his eyes. He must be a kind one. I'll convince him. I'll tell you what. The story we later get to know was that this woman was a drunkard on the village. She came to church to make money. That is what coveting does. Coveting will cause you to kill. That's what happened to Cain and Abel. The Bible says they both put a sacrifice before the Lord. We just read the story from Genesis chapter 4. They both make an offering to the Lord. The Lord accepts Abel's sacrifice and rejects Cain's sacrifice. And Cain is saying, why? Why him? Why not me? Why? The Bible says, then he talked to him. He talked to him. In other words, he tricked him. He said, Let, let's go, brother. Let's go. Let's go to the field today. You know, I, I have always wanted to learn how to farm. Let's go, you teach me. No, he was, no, pardon me. Abel was the shepherd and Cain was the farmer. So he tells him, you know what, let's go. Teach me how to tend. Tend sheep. I need to know. Brother, let's go. Please, I really want to come along. Of course, Abel, innocent Abel, takes his brother with him to the field. The Bible says, when they get to the field, what did the brother do? 
he slew him. In other words, he murdered him. And why? He coveted what was happening in Abel's life. Why? Why his sacrifice? Why not mine? I should be the one. I should be the one whose sacrifice is being accepted. Why does the Lord talk to her? Why does the Lord speak through her? Why not me? I should be the one. Why is she the one holding the microphone? Why? Why? And if you don't get the chance to get the microphone in your hands, you know what you're going to do? You will start doing either of these things. Say, ah, ah, she doesn't really know how to speak. <laughs> ah, ah, even her English, it's wanting. It's very poor English. What did she say? She said she has a degree in what? In law. But that English is so poor. What? Ah, ah, me, I know her. That woman, her heart is very bad. You start now smearing and hmm, putting the person down. Why? Because you cannot be in the place that you're coveting to be. Ladies and gentlemen, are you finding your place in this conversation? The Lord surely wants to heal us this morning. Coveting bathes anger. It bathes bitterness. It bathes, by the way, even sexual sin. Sexual sin, ladies and gentlemen, many times it comes from coveting. You see a shoe, like, mm, even me, hmm, even me. By the way, is that car little boy? Hey. Ah. You know, he said he can give me some money. Hmm. I think, let me just give in. I get the money. I get a shoe. I will, and me when I wear it, I will do it with a mini skirt. They will see me. They will see me. Hers will be nothing. Am I talking to someone this morning? Sexual sin. Let me talk to the married man now. No. Let me talk to the married woman. I respect the men. I respect the women as well. <laughs> You're married, dear woman. But you see another man. <laughs> I don't know why. The Lord hasn't released me to talk about that. Let me abandon it. But coveting also introduces sexual sin in your life. A covetous spirit <laughs> is a demonic spirit. It, it quenches the fire of the Holy Spirit in your life. You know, it, it just, and it, it just stifles, you know, the fruit of the spirit, you know, love, joy, peace, goodness, kindness, self-control, you know, humility. It just stifles all those things. They will not grow in your life. The moment you allow Mr. Covetousness to sit in your heart, it quenches the fire of the Holy Spirit. Remember where there is strife, the Spirit of the Lord will not sit. And the other definition of covetousness is strife. You will see as I've been demonstrating. It is strife itself. Strife within you. Strife. We can't see it. Many times we cannot even detect it. But it is there. It is seated. And all you're waiting is for an opportunity to. Eh? Like Cain. To strike. And if you fail to get the opportunity to strike... You turn, it, you turn into an animal, a very dangerous animal. Praise the name of the Lord.
Praise the name of the Lord, church. Amen. Coveting is what has caused trouble in many families. When that spirit takes charge of your life, that's why you have things like sibling rivalry. Have you heard of that? Sibling rivalry? You know, your sisters. Why are you fighting your sister? Why? You know, that one just says, you know what? Why her? Why her? Why is it her? She's the one that dad is always calling. Why her? Why her? Why is she? She's the one that mom is always talking to. Why her? Why? Why not me? Hey, she's your sister. Find out from her sister. What are those things that you do that make mommy and daddy call you all the time? Hey, sister, what are those words that you use hey, to talk to mommy? That she, she's very comfortable and peaceful in your presence. Tell me, I also want that place. Hey, you know, I want us to be there together. Can both of us be there at the same time or at different times? It's okay. But I also want that opportunity. Have you heard about the stepmother syndrome? You know about it. You don't know. Let me define it for you. Stepmother syndrome. She will cook the fish and she will give you, uh, if you're not her child, she will give you the fins. In Samia, they call it olubakai. Olubakai. Eh? Even the sound. Something that drops in your plate and it makes sound. From fish. Eh? Why? Why must she grow fat in my house? Why? Why must she look nice in my house? Only my children should look good. It's time to pay school fees. Yours. Everybody else goes back to school. And yours, because you're the stepchild, your school's fees disappear. You don't get any. Why? Why must she go to school? Why must she become successful my, like my children? Only my children must. Only. Only mine. Why? In my house? The stepmother syndrome. It is Mr. Kavachas seated right here. You're thinking, me, 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 mine, me, myself, and eh? me, myself, and I. Possessions. Possessions. Hmm? And if they belong to another person, that one also you want. And by the way, you are sowing to the flesh. Can you imagine? You, Emulokole, sowing to the flesh. You are called to walk in the spirit. You are called to walk in the spirit. Kwanini? Oh, pardon me. Pardon me. Why? Why are you sowing to your flesh? Ask yourself. Okay, ask your neighbor. Why are you sowing to your flesh? You are called to walk in the spirit. Your master, Jesus, the one you're saying you're following, he walked in the spirit. Hey, let me lift it up a bit. I take it to the national level. I won't talk about the church. What does Kabachas do to a nation? I'll tell you. That is why we have corruption. Yes, corruption. A government officer seated in his office using his position, signing checks, transferring money that is supposed to go build a road in Buate. He transfers it into his account and goes and builds apartments in Buate. Massive, magnificent with a dusty road. Corruption. Tribalism. Yes, I said it. Tribalism. Covetousness. You're saying, uh, uh, only those who look like me, only those who come from where I come from, they are the ones. They are the ones. They are the ones. Where do you come from? How do you look? Sorry, no. No. No, no, no. Only us. Tribalism. Pastor, allow me. I have a disclaimer. This does not come from Kawempe Worship Center. But dictatorship is a result of covetousness. I said it. Why? The land is supposed to be governed by a constitution. But you choose, you're going to govern it by the gun. 
Yes. Why? You want to stay. You want to stay in the seat. But if you use the constitution, you won't stay. They will vote you out. So what do you do? You use the gun. It is for me. It is for me and my children and my grandchildren. It is for me. It is mine. It is mine, me and I and myself. Dictatorship. Ladies and gentlemen, can I continue? Yeah. Let me see your hand if you want me to continue. I'm taking it higher to the global level. Covetousness. Pastor, again, with your permission. Slavery. Ladies and gentlemen, slavery. You know slavery? Where they took the able-bodied men and women and took him and sorry, and took them, crossed them, oceans, went to faraway lands to till sugarcane, coffee, uh, cotton, to work in people's homes. That was covetousness. They said, ah, these ones, they are strong. They work hard. They don't even get tired. They are not weaklings. Ah, uh ah, -uh, we need these. Let them come. Ah, uh ah, -uh, they won't come. Let's take them by force. Take them by force. Throw them in the ship, chain them, take them. As if they had no land and people to look after back home. And by the way, they were never paid. You know that. Eh? And do you know that slavery has continued to debt? Pastor, colonialism. I just want us to understand why the Lord hates covetousness. Colonialism. If you haven't been to a history class, colonialism is where. Hmm. Okay. The British, the Germans, the French, they came to Africa. They actually. Hmm. Let me first move closer. They sat down, took the map of Africa. Hmm? You know, like a piece of cake, and you divide. And say, ah, me, me, I'll take this one. <laughs> Ooh, it's nice, it's nice, it's nice. Then the other one also says, ah, me, ah, I'll take this western part. I think that one is good also. Eh? They have gold. Ah, they have, you know, they have things there. Eh? Hey, hey. Then the other one also says, ah, me, ha, this eastern part, it will satisfy me. The queen will be happy with me. And ladies and gentlemen, they came, they occupied, they took, they plundered, they plundered, they plundered. In case no one has told you, they plundered. You know what plunder means? It's a simpler form of saying stealing. But you take by force and in large amounts, large. To debt, they say, they are still benefiting. If it is gold, if it is timber, <laughs> there's a very sad story. Pastor, I pray I have permission. France. <sighs> France and West Africa. They made a pact at independence. And do you know what they said? They said, we give you independence. Lakini, all your revenues, hmm? 80%, you deposit. Where? Someone guess. Where? You deposit in France, in our treasury, like their central bank. And after you've done that, you can use that money, but not all of it. A percentage, I'm, I, I'm not very sure how much, but I think they say 20%. But again, that 20%, you don't just come and, yeah. and dish out. No, 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 no. You take it as a loan. You take it as a loan and you pay interests. And do you know where the interest goes? Yeah. Are you wondering why Africa is still very poor? I'm about to finish this, this part of the conversation. People like Thomas Sankara, they tried. They tried to change that status quo. Do you know what happened to him? You don't know? 
Banangi. Am I in Uganda? Thomas Sankara was assassinated. Those things you hear of military coup, and the people have taken over. What? Let me tell you. There is somebody engineering those things. Those things you hear of military warfare, you know, the rebels have attacked, the country is at war. Does Africa make any guns? Do we have any factories for guns? Yeah. When we are disorganized, when we don't have proper governance, then they are able to come and plunder. Eh? Plunder. Take more. Take more. They want it. They want it for themselves. Me, myself, and I. Wow. Ladies and gentlemen, it's the spirit of the Lord guiding me. To covet is a sin. It is a dangerous, deadly sin. We do not know that you're at it. But you know it. You know it. <laughs> you know it. <sighs> God have mercy. May the Lord have mercy on us. May the Lord help us. May the Lord heal us. Okay. Let me just talk about the church. What it has done to the church. I spoke a bit about it. But strife, strife in our midst, gossip in our midst, backbiting each other in our midst, sexual sin in our midst, hate in our midst, division, you know, classes in our midst, a failure to extend love in our midst. Ladies and gentlemen, all of that is in the church. But it all demonstrates. It demonstrates the covetous spirit. Uh, how much time am I supposed to have here? What time do we finish? Now, ish. Oh God, I, uh, like I say, ladies and gentlemen, I, um, I was just speaking. I was just speaking. I'm speaking from my heart. I'm just speaking. And the Lord just wants to extend mercy. The Lord wants to extend mercy this morning. You need to flee from it. You need to flee being covetous. You need to run away from it. You need to seize, just seize, seize and desist from sowing to your flesh. I'll speak a little more. Actually, I'll speak much more in the second service. But to conclude this session, let us just read one more scripture. Pastor, I don't know why, but my heart is so heavy as I continue to speak about this subject. It's just heavy. A heaviness I haven't felt in a long time. Which perhaps just confirms that there is somebody who needs to be touched this morning. Hey. We'll read Galatians chapter 6, verse 7 to 8, just to finish this session, and then I'll add more after in the second service. Okay. All right. I'm trying to address how do we heal? 
how do we heal from covetousness? Galatians chapter 6. Galatians chapter 6, verse 7 to 8. I will read. Be not deceived. God is not mocked. For whatsoever a man sows, that shall he also reap. For he that sows to his flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption. But he that sows to the Spirit shall of the Spirit reap life everlasting. Praise the name of the Lord. There is room. There is room at the top. <laughs> there is room. There is an opportunity. There is space. There is a chance. If you have been held in this web, the web of covetousness, do not be deceived. God cannot be mocked. You may have hidden it in your heart, but he who searches the secrets of the heart, he sees it. Do not be deceived. You cannot mock him. You've mocked him enough. And enough is enough. The time is now. The time is now. Turn away. Quit sowing to your flesh. Stop it. End it now. Choose to sow to the flesh. Pardon me, pardon me. Choose to sow to the spirit. Sow to the spirit. How do you sow to the spirit? Turn to God. Turn to God in prayer. Turn to God in repentance. Turn to God. Turn to the word of the Lord. Choose obedience. Achan disobeyed. Achan turned away from the word of the Lord. Today, choose to obey. Choose to follow the word of the Lord. Repent. Repent, Kawempe Worship Center. Turn away. Turn away. Turn away, the Lord says. He says, turn away. Turn away. Quit. Stop it. Stop. So to the Spirit. Turn to your maker. Turn to your maker this morning. Turn to your maker. Allow him heal you. Allow the Lord heal you. Allow the Lord heal you. So you can reap life and life everlasting. The Lord bless you, church. In closing, allow me to uh, welcome Pastor Robert Kasozi. Thank you very much, church. Can we all stand? Amen. Can we all stand, please? You are so quiet as the Lord has spoken to you. As, as uh, Susan stepped on your toes, she did on mine. We all been there. It would be, it would be a lie if I say I've never been there. I, I've we all been there and we need to keep fighting. He said, Whoa. Amen. And do you need um, you need to understand there is no sin that the Lord does not forgive. And some of you you just need to go back and take back whatever you took. And some of you, the thing that you have, the way you got them, you don't need them. You don't need them anymore. You just need to get rid of them. And the answer and the solution to this covetous spirit is one. You need to be on fire for God. So there is a song we did. I think that was the last song. Can you guys put the lyrics of that song? You're my first love up here. And I want you people, when we... I purposely told the worship team that they needed to sing this song during this period of prayer and fasting. And I knew somehow that we're going to need this. The song says, Sam, if you need to come back on your jitter. The song says, this part says, you are my first love. Can we all read the lyrics? One, two, three, go.
and the only one. You know why the commandment says you shall have no other God? It's for this problem. The Lord knew the moment you get a second love beside him, you will start to kill one another. You start to hate one another. And I want us to sing this part here and just make it a prayer as the repentance that, Lord, I've strayed away, I've gone be beyond, but I'm returning. You are still my first love and you are the only one. And make yourself a covenant with God that there will never be another in your heart where God sits. Amen. Otherwise, if you go back to the scripture Susan read for us, you realize that it's only one man, just one man, Achan. And what happened to the whole camp? They all were defeated by this small invisible enemy. If we don't deal with this, if you're one in the family that has this, the whole family is in trouble. If we don't deal with this, all of us together, all of us are in trouble. But we need to deal with this. Amen. Can you close your eyes and lift up your hands and just tell God that, you know what? You are still my only one. Let's do that part. Can you sing along with the choir? Just a few times.
Every hand lifted up, everyone in this room say Jesus. Everyone louder say Jesus. I return, I return back to you. I repent of the sin of covetousness. I repent. Please forgive me for making you secondary in my relationship. But today, I return to the first love. You are the only one and the only one in my soul, in my spirit. You will always be my number one. Louder church say you will always be my number one. You will always be my focus. You will always be my treasure. I have no other God beside you. Louder say I have no other God beside you. No idols in my spirit but you and you alone. I will follow, I will serve for the rest of my life. Be my desire, be my consuming desire. I don't hear you church, be my consuming desire. Let my soul, let my heart burn with you. Fill my heart with love, love to love you. Make me fall in love with you. Cause me to sell every other thing and follow you alone. Be my treasure. Be my life. Be my desire. Be everything that I need. Let my soul, let everything within me be focused on you and you alone. In Jesus name, in Jesus name. Amen. Now if you don't, if you don't fall in love with Jesus again, if you don't fall in love with Jesus again, where we are, if we go like this to where we are going, some of you, you will be amazed how many people you will kill. You are not a killer right now. But if you don't deal with what we are talking about now, in a few years from now, you are so capable of doing thing, the things that no one can believe you can do. But that's what that spirit does. But the Lord is healing us as a church. Amen. So that's the, the, the end of the first service and the beginning of the second one. But as you go, all of you that need to go after this service, please make sure what is the registry for, registry for lunch. How many people are paid for lunch for the 13th? Can I see your hand? Can I see your hand? Okay, uh, so, okay, yeah, I understand some of you, you, you are not going to break on the 40th day, so we excuse you for that, and so we take it for granted that if, if you are not paying for lunch, you are fasting beyond the 40 days, because some of us are taking a break on the, 90, on the 13th, so how many people are going to have lunch with us. Can I see your hand? How many people uh, are going to have lunch with us on the 13th? Okay. All of you, all of you that have raised your hand, how many people are able to pay for lunch? Okay. Put your hands together. How many people are not able to pay for that lunch? I'm counting. I'm counting. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And amazingly, someone 
just text me and text me and told me she's paying for seven people. So, so if I if I have counted you, I see sister is so your hand. We'll take care of you. Someone else will pay for you. But um, how many people are going to pay during this week? Okay. So guys, as you go out, there is a registry at, at, at the table as you go out. Please, you haven't registered that you are going to pay, please register. By next Sunday, let's be done with the payment. We need the money next by the end of this next week so we can do lunch for all of us. May the Lord go with you. May the Lord bless you. May this week be a victorious week for you. May the Lord give you a, a song of the redeemed. May the Lord give you a dance of victory. May the Lord go before you and beside you. May the Lord go around you and above you and beneath you. May the blessings of the Lord follow you these next seven days. May the Lord make you a winner. May you be a champion in life. May your enemy come to you in one direction. But this person seven in Jesus' name. I declare that witchcraft and death and sickness and accidents and every infirmity shall have no place in your house. But the Lord your God shall be like a mighty warrior in the midst of your house. The Lord shall keep you in the morning and in the evening as you go out and as you come in, as you sit down and as you rise up. The Lord your God will be your keeper and his name be a banner over you in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. If you need to go, you can leave, but we are starting the second service right now.